Hello everyone. Welcome to Pathomad. Today let us discuss about a small topic of fibrocystic disease of the breast. Before starting this topic, I would like to give a brief introduction about the anatomy of breast, about the terminal duct lobuli unit. See, this is the nipple areola complex. This is the nipple areola complex which contains the lactiferous duct the lactiferous sinus this lactiferous duct going beyond that is posteriorly into the parenchyma or the stroma into the tissue of the breast this lactiferous duct it branches into segmental subsegmental ultimately into terminal ducts terminal ducts when you zoom in when you zoom in see this is the terminal duct which branches ultimately into the terminal ducts terminal duct so each terminal duct at the tip it has a lobule this is the light lavender is the lobule this lobule it contains many acini acini so this terminal duct it can be divided into two parts that is outside the lobule outside the lobule this is called an extra lobular terminal duct this is the extra lobular terminal duct while this stalk like stalk outside the lollipop is the extra lobular terminal duct the stalk inside the lollipop it is called the intra lobular terminal duct extra lobular and intra lobular terminal ducts so after this is another component that is the stroma the stroma present within the lobule is called intra lobular is called intra lobular stroma intra lobular stroma inside the lobule and there is also stroma present in between the two lobules this is one lobule this is one lobule the stroma present in between these two, two lobules which is colored as light pink this is the interlobular stroma so this terminal duct with the acini lobule this forms one terminal duct lobular unit and uh, let us classify the lesions of the breast before we begin this fibrocystic disease the lesions can be classified as non proliferative proliferative without atypia proliferative with atypia carcinoma in c2 non proliferative breast lesions they are examples can be the fibrocystic disease which we shall discuss now the fibrocystic disease comes under the non proliferative lesions of the breast other examples are mild hyperplasia fibroadenoma without complex features like calcification duct ectasia that is duct dilatation these are the few examples of non proliferative lesions of breast secondly we have this proliferative lesions without atypia without atypia means without bad looking cells without atypical cells and these include the moderate hyperplasia fibroadenoma with complex features like calcification another example is intraductal papilloma thirdly proliferative lesions with atypia with bad looking cells examples are atypical ductal hyperplasia atypical lobular hyperplasia and lastly carcinoma in c2 ductal carcinoma in c2 lobular carcinoma in c2 the disease which we are going to discuss now that is the fibrocystic disease it comes under non proliferative lesions of the breast so the name itself suggests fibrocystic fibrous component cystic component along with that one other another component is there that is adenosis that means increased number of acini the acini number will be increased for example if a normal acini contains 10 it will be increased more than 10 increased number of acini per lobule it is one of the component of fibrocystic disease of the breast along with fibrosis and cystic change 
so beginning with the palpatory findings on palpation this is a lumpy bumpy breast lumpy bumpy breast because of the increased number of asini within the no lobule it is highly nodular nodular so on palpation you find lumps bumpy lumpy bumpy breast and it is painful while you palpate and on grossly it has a cystic component cyst is present the cyst is all is also called blue dome cyst see this is a gross image of the fibrocystic disease blue dome cyst because the cyst is filled with a fluid which has a bluish tinge so it is called classically blue dome it projects out like a dome blue dome cyst on fnac the first ever test you perform is fnac on aspiration the cyst decreases in size or it can either totally disappear while you aspirate uh, the fluid within the cyst it either decreases to some amount or totally disappears like you a fully filled balloon when you puncture the balloon it uh, air vanishes like so it's like that for example is like that when you aspirate the fluid it completely uh, collapses or it may decrease in size so it can be a therapeutic drainage a uh, patient when she has the cyst uh, la huge number of cysts she feels heavy breast heavy i mean she feels the weight of the breast as soon as you aspirate she feels very light oh my god my problem is solved she feels very light but this is very temporary because even after aspiration totally the cyst it keeps on filling the fluid because of apocrine metaple metaplasia which i am going to discuss now and on biopsy the cyst shows apocrine metaplasia see this is the microscopic image this is one cyst this is one cyst the lining epithelium there are cells apocrine metaplasia means increased eosinophilia increased pinkishness everything is pink and blue in pathology but here the cells are more eosinophilic more pinkishness and the cells here you can see something projecting out from the cells like this projecting out it it show as if the cells are uh, trying to vomit out something into the cavity it is trying to vomit out its own substance into the cavity that is it is called an apocrine snout apocrine snouting means it is vomiting out material into the cyst that's how the cyst is filled up the cyst cavity is filled up the with material eosinophilic material hence even after performing the drainage aspiration the cyst keeps on filling itself because of this vomiting out of the cells apocrine metaplasia means increased eosinophilic eosinophilia apocrine snout means the cell is trying to vomit out some material into the cyst cavity and the other second component of this fibrocystic disease is adenosis that is increased number of asini per lobule as i explained here increased for example 10 asini per lobule more than 10 20 25 30 if at all it keeps on the number of asini per lobule increases that is called adenosis that is called adenosis coming to the other component fibrosis fibrosis why does fibrosis occur because the cyst they frequently rupture they rupture within the breast and this because of this rupture they release the secretory material the cavity which is which contains this material a fluid the secretory material it is thrown into the adjacent stroma it is thrown into the adjacent stroma and which leads to chronic inflammation chronic inflammation throwing out the secretory material into the adjacent stroma it incites a chronic inflammation and due to that fibrosis and hence the three components are completed like cystic change because of cyst rupture there is fibrosis and also there is an adenosis the increased number of asini per lobule so all these three components constitute a fibrocystic disease of the breast thank you everyone have a nice day